Hi everyone, welcome to another Tech Nerd tutorial. Today we're going to talk about PDO, another self-hosted file management system that puts your data in orbit. PDO helps to master your universe of files. That basically means that it's an open source file sync and sharing solution that delivers really good control over enterprise and service providers. It has been formally called Ajax Explorer, and there is a video in case you want to learn more about an introduction, as well as to get started, get some support, and join the gang or community. We have a demo as well as you can download the server software, which is what we'll do a little later, as well as they do have commercial support if you're a company, login for the community, and then here is the summary of some of the features. It does manage your documents in any browser, but it also has iOS and Android apps. It also can share files internally and externally and provide public sites so that you can publish your document list to people without users and that you can actually have statistics on people who access your files. Admin, there's LDAP and AD support, and then there is your external sources, and then the scalability of Pahedio is quite well documented. A few more posts and blog updates at the bottom, then we can go ahead and click the download, or just in the drop-down menu, the download the PDO server from there. That's going to take us to this download PDO page. It's going to first talk about enterprise grade support, which does have a monthly or an annual subscription. We can scroll down to manual installation and a Linux package installation. If you click that click here, it's just going to take you a little bit to the bottom of this page where it's going to expand the information. We are going to install PDO on an Ubuntu desktop server environment. So we can go ahead and scroll down to the dev packages. Before we follow these instructions, we are going to modify them a little by first installing a lab server. So we're going to go ahead, open terminal, and we want to go ahead and type sudo apt-get install task cell. This will install the application that just helps us install the rest of the web server. Once that's done installing, then we're going to sudo task cell to initiate it, and using our keyboard arrow keys, we're going to key down to the lamp server spacebar to select and enter to initiate. From there, it's going to download some files. But during this time, it's going to also ask for a password for that MySQL root user. So go ahead, type in a password and confirm it. And then it's going to continue installing the rest of the packages. This will make it a little easier later on. I did try to just use the simplest instructions possible from their site. I found it was still a little quirky. So we're going to do it this way where we install the LAMP web server first. Then once that's done, we can go back and now we can follow the instructions. So we need to add some repositories in the sources list. So we can just go ahead and copy that bolded section. And back in terminal, what we want to do is edit it. So we're going to once again type sudo, but now we're going to use the nano editor. So nano, and then we can paste the file location and then hit enter. That's going to give us a lot of colors. This is fine. We're just going to use the arrow key to go all the way down to the bottom. And then when we go back to our instructions, we just want to copy the next two lines and paste those into this particular file. The two at the bottom is testing, where these ones are stable. So we don't really want to use the testing because those would be the ones that are still being developed. Stable ones for sure are going to work. So we now need to hit Control O and enter to save and then control X to exit. Now that we're done that, we just need to go back to our instructions and we go back to our next step. So our next step is to add the public key to use these repositories. So we can just copy this particular line of code and once again in terminal, just paste it in. That's going to download a very small file and it's going to add it so that everything is working. It'll say okay. Then we can go to our next step, which is just to update the database with all the different software in it. So we'll go ahead, copy this one. This one's quite common, so if you just type it in, it works just fine too. Paste in its sudo apt update. It's going to update all the repositories by downloading all the information. And then we can now go ahead, finally install PDO. So sudo apt install PDO. We can just copy that command and paste it in. 
once it is pasted, it's going to go ahead and ask for us to confirm the things that it's going to install. We're going to go ahead and just hit enter, and then it's going to go ahead and install all those additional files. This is kind of a nice simple way of installing PDO because then also when your system updates, it'll also update PDO when it gets new updates. The next line is going to activate the configuration file. We'll just go ahead and copy that and back in terminal, just right click and then paste. And we're just doing this for quite a few of the other subsequent lines. We need to enable the PDO site. So once again, copy and paste the next line. And then also after that, we also need to enable some of the additional extensions of our web server. So we're going to copy and paste the next line, not the one with the hashtag, the number sign, the one after that. So sudo a2nmod rewrite. And then there's one more that we want to add, this php5 nmod mcrypt. This one, oddly enough, doesn't have sudo in front of it. So we just need to now manually type in sudo and then paste in the php5 n mod to enable this particular modification. So type in sudo, paste in the rest of the command, hit enter, and then we're done copy and pasting code from the PDO instruction installations. It does say that we still need to restart Apache, so we're going to go ahead and do that before we move on. So Apache is our web server, so we'll go back to terminal, and this one we will have to manually type out. It's going to be sudo service apache2 and then restart. Go ahead and hit enter. It's going to say that it's restarting. It'll give us the okay, and now we're good to go. So back in Firefox, I'm just gonna open up a new tab and we're going to get to our web server. I am typing in an actual web address, so you can click the annotation on your screen to learn how to do this if you haven't already. If not, you can just use the IP address. Now that we're here, there is a few warnings. The first one is about PHP output buffer. Uh, the next one's SSL encryption, and then we have our server character set. The server character set says that we can set that in the next step, so we're going to ignore that. The PHP output is the one we want to deal with. So we can go ahead in our terminal. This is where we want to edit a PHP any file. So here we're going to have to type in sudo nano, and then the location of this any file, which is going to be etc. php5 apache2, and then php.ini. Go ahead and open this. It is quite a large file, so it is a lot of scrolling, so I'm using the page down of my keyboard. I'm looking for the PHP output buffering. So when I get there, then all of the semicolons on the left is commented lines. I need to get to the one that doesn't have one that says output underscore buffering. It has 4096. I want to delete that and I just want to replace it with off. Going to have to control O to save, control X to exit, and then once again I need to restart the Apache server. So sudo service Apache to restart. Goes ahead and restarts our server. Now we can go back to our Firefox and we can refresh our screen. And then it's going to do the diagnostics once again, and now we no longer have that PHP output buffer warning. Now we can click the link in the center that tells us to continue with our installation. So now we're going to get to our setup wizard. You can choose to change the default language. I'm leaving it in English and I'm clicking the start wizard button. It's going to ask for admin access. So I am going to give it a username and uh, a display name. I'm using admin, but really you should use something else. And then you do need to put a strong password. They will not install unless the admin has a strong password. In our global options, you can choose the UTF-8, which is what the default is and will fix the warning from before and some additional fields for you to add. You can add emailing out, but then you need to make sure you have the correct PHP extensions to do that. There is also configuration for your storage. The storage type, you we do want to have a database. So when we select that, in the installation of our web server, we did install something called a MySQL database, which is what's default selected. The, man, the automatic installation uses SQL Lite, which has less features. And then from there, we can just go ahead and type in the user root. And then the password is going to be the password that we typed in in the install from before. So I'm going to go ahead and type those things in. Then we're going to double check to make sure that the uh, database is working.
So typed in the root, typed in our password, I'm going to go ahead and test connection. And when I get a result, oh, it looks like we don't actually have the PDO database created. So we're just going to quickly go do that once again in terminal. So in terminal, we now want to type in mysql hyphen u root hyphen p. And then when we hit enter, we're going to get a password or an error because I can't type. So trying this again, it is mysql, not myql and then hyphen u root and password. So hopefully you did the first try and not like me. It's gonna give us our password. We're gonna type in that password. That's gonna get us to our database. So now we see MySQL. So all we have to type in now is create database, PDO, P-Y-D-I-O, semicolon, enter. It's gonna say query is okay. We can type in exit to exit and now we're done creating that database. Going back to Firefox, if I click this particular test connection button again, it's going to say connection established. Everything is great. Go ahead and scroll down. Now you can have the option to add some additional users. We're going to skip that. We're just going to click install PDO. It's now going to give us some text that we want to copy and paste into the .htc access file that it apparently can't access itself. So I already controlled C to copy. And then now I'm just going to go ahead and sudo nano to that location. So there's a user share pdo dot ht access. There will already be text here. So you are going to have to delete all this text. There may be a faster way than just hitting delete, but that's just what I ended up doing until all the lines are gone. You can always delete this file and just remake it as well. And then from there, we can just paste in what was originally copied, control O, to save, control X to exit, and then we can go ahead and refresh our screen on Firefox. So all this is done, we go back to Firefox, we hit our refresh, and now once we've hit our refresh, it is going to load PDO. So we're basically done our installation. I would like to log in, so admin and the password that I gave it, and now we're going to be here in PDO. So it does look much more refined than some previous iterations. I am just going to go to my files and then hit the enter. So you can see what it looks like that I can go ahead and do things like upload files and there's create so I can create things like folders. So if I go ahead and click that, it'll ask me to create a folder. So all the things to do with file management. Other things that I want to point out is just in its administration. I can just click on my user as an admin and go to settings. And now I'm going to also have access to things like workspaces, users, creating applications, and so on. So that is how we would install PDO on an Ubuntu 14.04 desktop server. Also, I know we've done an installation of the own cloud file management system as well. So go ahead and leave us a like if you're interested in doing a side-by-side -side comparison of own cloud versus PDO, what are some of their benefits, their strengths, their weaknesses, and see which one might be the product for you. Hi everyone, thanks again for watching this video. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And go ahead and leave a comment down below if you have any additional questions or comments. Furthermore, check out some of our related videos or find us in our social media. If you would like email notifications of whenever we release new video or written tutorials, you can go to our webpage technerdservices.com and sign up for our weekly newsletter. We will send to your inbox notifications of those new video and tutorials. Thanks again for watching and until next time, keep teching on.